Ah, here we are again, trying to break my new toy, that Wink Hub, that I really don't have a strong use for. And I found out that it's got a local control server in it running on Node. It's fantastic. If you've got a Wink Hub, you can actually, I got my Wink set up with a name, so it's on my local network under Wink. But if you go to your Wink Hub at port 888 on HTTPS, it's got a API there. Sweet! So I'm just gonna wrench this into OpenHab the best I can. Well, I'm gonna wrench it into the demo house. So the first problem I had was that uh, it has this self-signed cert and I couldn't get OpenHab to communicate with the self-signed cert. So let's get rid of it. So I start out by just SSHing into the wink since it's rooted. I've got that. And the node API is under opt local control. And I'm just going to turn HTTPS off. It's all in node. It's real simple to read. So uh, VI actually it comes installed on this. Is this, I mean, this is convenient. It's got VI on there and everything. I love it. Um, let's see what's here to break. Process server. It's at line 112. I'm not going to go into the details of all of this, but. Uh, if you just root yours and take a look at it, I mean, this stuff is clean and easy to read. Anyway, remove HTTPS uh, and then mod it. Restart local control. It's that easy. Boom. Watch it hyperventilate for a second. Max out its CPU for a little bit while it gets restarted. Now you should have. Uh, oh, yeah, nothing at HTTP. Yes. Should have it at regular old HTTP. Wow, whammo. This thing's got like a tinker factor of 10, if there is such a thing. I mean, come on. That's just cool. So, let's leave that session open and exercise the uh, API. Oh, yeah, I forgot. We gotta go back over here and go into the database. Uh, local control data folder. There's this config.json file. And this is where I grabbed the keys from. Let me just pull this into something. I don't know if this has any data that's... Especially since I've taken the HTTPS out of mine. I don't know if any of this matters, but... Uh, uh, can't have that. It's malformatted. Anyway, uh, I just grabbed the token out of here. And these access tokens. Move that out of the way. And now we can actually play with it. Or communicate with it, whatever you want to call that. So let's do our first request. I'll just do it all in the terminal here might as well it's easy enough boom ah boo come on come on these are the struggles the struggles all right so we're gonna do a get request just to get things started the URL of it is going to be the obvious wink on port 8888 and we're just gonna get the devices and we have to send it a header of authorization with the bearer of the token that we just copied I swear I just copied that token let's just grab a token now Wow, oh, there we go there it is and I think that's all we need ha ha so, now, yeah, since JSON's a little easier to look at when it's formatted, we'll just look at it in a formatted manner. And we'll see we have the three devices. We have the hub as itself, I imagine, as a device. It's considering itself a device. And then the uh, two super sweet lights. <laughs> and you'll see this one's powered off, and uh, it's got a brightness of one. I don't know how it can have a brightness of one if it's powered off, but... Um, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Either way, that's the situation it's currently at. Now, I think this API is supposed to be similar to the one that Wink offers through their website, but it has a few differences. Um, I don't actually know too much about the one that... Man, I keep saying I don't know anything about anything, but either way, it seems to work occasionally. Let's just uh, change something. URL. We're going to go back to the wink. This is going to be something we'll be typing in quite a bit. Lights 1 is the first light. Yeah, here we go. And we 
we'll do our authorization header again. Copy our token. I mean, I imagine these tokens will change. I don't know how we can get them to stay the same, but new a content type header. I can read and type and think at the same time. Now, if I tell myself that enough times, I might be able to uh, uh, succeed at it. I don't think I need another header. I think I need some data this time. And we're going to pass it some data. What is it? The desired, desired state? There we go. And the desired state will be... What do we have? Powered. Yeah. Here, let me just copy this. Except for I don't need the false. Powered true. I think that'll work. Oh, that's not very fast. Oh, there we go. And the light is in the office, and you can't see it, but uh, it turned on the moment that it responded here. I don't know why it took so long. Usually it's a little bit quicker here. Let me see if I can see if a couple communications with it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that turned it off quick. Oh, there it went. Huh. I don't know why it was lagged out the first time, but the, the second couple that I did here. So now if I go back... And we go back to this one where we just get the device information or all of the device's information here. Copy this and paste it back in. Format it. We will see that it's powered on. Uh, so there's a way to communicate it with it. That is awesome. And we could just locally control it. I mean, I don't, I haven't actually tried to block off the internet from my Wink to see if there's any kind of necessity there uh, for it to be actually connected to the internet anymore when you have this local control. But uh, this seems to be enough to make it work with um, OpenHab, so let's get it shoehorned in here. I'm going to pretend that this is my house, even though my apartment has no floors. And I'm going to switch out the ceiling light that doesn't do anything right now. With uh, I'm going to make it flip the light here. How cool will that be? So let's get to that. I'm going to start by SSHing into, man, I, let's go ahead and just use this window. I'm going to SH into the OpenHAB server and go to the configurations. Yeah. Bear with me, I'm just learning this right now. And I think it's under rules. Well, I, I made this work, but uh, I'm trying to remake it work for the sake of this. No, it's not rules, it's items. So in OpenHab, everything is an item. I hope you know more about OpenHab than I do uh, if you're trying to make this work. Um, and please, in the comments, correct the crap out of everything that I say if you'd like. I, I'm, nope, I can't change directory into a file. And I just want to change the demo items. Now, I want to make um, the office on the what was it, first floor office ceiling light work. So, what is it? First floor office. There we go. And I think what needs to happen first is we just need to add to the end of this something that tells OpenHab what to do like or how to get the information about this um, HTTP I really don't understand this part very much I actually copied and pasted a bunch of stuff uh, to see this actually works so I think it's actually gonna just pull this HTTP URL 88 lights one and it's gonna actually it's going to use this information to determine the status of the light and this is going to be the header or one of the headers application JSON I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so I can see a little bit more there we go application JSON and the authorization header uh, I need that that uh, token again, authorization, bearer, 
equals a token. I don't even know what this 6,000 stands for. I feel like it should be over 9,000, but whatever. Uh, and then we're going to have this run through what they call a transform so that the data coming back from this can be materialized into something useful for the application. Get wink bulb. .js. Um, and I think that will do the trick there. In another window that you can't see on another computer, I think it's going to automatically reload these changes once you change things in OpenHab. I think it watches the files. But uh, we will we will see. Uh, first floor office. I'm going back to this again. HTTP equals wink. Uh, ah, yeah. I opened up OpenHab on my other computer and I uh, was looking. It does automatically reload this stuff. So I knew that the I had it typed in there wrong. So I had to have bearer, not bear. Anyway, uh, at this point, it's going to be trying to look for that transform script which should be get bulb Eek. let me find out what that was again what was it uh, I know it had wink in the name get wink bulb I'm just going to copy this because <laughs> we need to create this script if this was any clunkier uh, it would make no sense at all so in transform get wink bulb .js. fantastic now we're getting somewhere so we're gonna make a quick JavaScript file or so it's gonna pass this data uh, oops insert it's gonna pass the data from that it receives from the command line request or the URL into this. Oh, shoot, I probably shouldn't be making this uh, video. I don't, I don't understand half the stuff that uh, <laughs> OpenHab does yet. But I do know how to make a simple function in JavaScript. So we're going to take the input data, which is a bunch, just a little bit of JSON, and we're going to parse it. Uh, J, JSON parse? Yeah parse even. I'm going to parse that input, write some horrible code for data, last reading, powered. Actually, I think that's very similar to, yeah, there we go, data, last reading, connection, true. So in this case, powered and brightness. There we go. That's how that's going to be getting that. Powered and If it uh, is true, we're going to return on, I believe. Otherwise, we'll return off. There we go. Does that look like valid JavaScript to you? Well, we'll find out. So, now let's see here. If I go back over, this is not actually going to do anything but it should if it's reading it right yep so the lights on and then if I exit out of life book and there we go change this to false before we hit enter we're gonna turn it off oh, there goes my light it turned off waiting for it to realize it in the app sometime today there it goes yeah so then uh, uh, powered is true turns it on instantly wait for it to realize it in this app come on there it goes so now the open is realizing that the ceiling light is turning on and off and it's updating its status accordingly which is step one to world domination of all lights in our near vicinity now let's see if we can make it so that it will control the light which is just a like a 
half a step away from this point. And let's SSH back into Lifebook, go back to the OpenHab configurations folder, and let's make a script. So before I was passing, or I was, I've been turning the lights on and off just using curl. So let's just make a script that uh, bash script that does that. Um, let's call it control wink light dot sh. That sounds good enough for our, me. And let's just put in here. Shabang, shabang, da, da, da. make it a bash script, and do curl request put. I'm just going to do this as, as if I were on the command line. You are, oh, URL is going to be H -E wink eight, eight lights, and since I have two lights, might as well make this a variable number. Zero. The argument zero is the name in Bash script. So I gotta work through it real quick. And then the number one would be the status of the light. Maybe no. The number, the first variable would be the first argument. That might be the light number. The second variable would be on or off. So um, let's just go with the first variable will be the light number. Yeah, that sounds good. And then. We'll put all of our secure uh, data right there in a nice script that we can. Oops, son of a diddly. I'm going to copy this out here. That's our token and content type application JSON. That should work. Data. Desired state. You could see all of this right in the JSON. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's super straightforward. Powered, and this will be two. Yeah. I don't know why it takes my brain like 30 seconds to figure that out. I must be a very, very slow developer. So. I think that'll work. So let's just give that a wing here. Let's make this executable and control. We want to switch to light one to uh, off, which would be false. Well, and I know you can't see the light, but it did go off. So let me just turn it on. There it goes. You can see it here that it just switched true light went on all right well so we've got a script that you can call on the command line uh, to flip the light on and off and from this point we can go to rules I believe and at the very bottom of this file I'm going to make a rule for this rule I think this is just a name I don't think this has any significance other than a name. Now when item, oh what's the name of that? Uh, I need the name of the light. Uh, what was it called? First floor office light office ceiling. There we go. So you need the actual name of the item. So paste that in there. Uh, when it received a command, then let's see, received command. I think this is the name of the variable that is passed. I don't know, you'd think that received command would actually be the name of the very... I, I'm completely babbling. Anyway, uh, if the received command is offed, I want to execute the command line uh, 
opt, open tab, configuration. You know what? There's probably a way to just type in the command here, but uh, wink light. I think that was the name of it. And then we want it to control the first light and we want it to turn it off. It would be nice to have some variable names for that. That should work. And then if receive, make it give one so that it can turn on. Uh, execute command line. My Vim is using tabs. That is not cool. Am I even using control wink light? Oh. Yeah. That's the name of the script. Control wink light dot sh. The first the ID or device ID of one and we want it to be true. Fantastic. I'm gonna shrink this down a little bit just so we can see it a little more, even though it might make it small on the video. And we'll end. Oh. Page down. So when the item of light first floor office ceiling receives received command, if the command is to turn it off, execute this command line. If it's on, execute this command line. And I believe that should automatically save it and reload, so Yep, that worked to turn the light off. Oh, what the heck. I like switched it back on for some reason. And then it switched it back off. Why in the world did it do that? Huh. Huh. On. And it switches it on real quick. What the frog. I think the pixies are confused. Oh, there we goes. I mean, the light didn't switch back off while OpenHab said it was off, but I think there's a problem in here where, uh, let's go back to the request of get the devices. I believe the desired state will maintain, I guess we just got to update our JavaScript a little bit so that when it's requesting the data from the device because the device the device's last reading doesn't update extremely fast it doesn't update fast enough for this to not flip like I, the lights off the lights still off even though it flipped on and eventually the last reading will update to tell it to uh, that it's actually off so uh, but this is flipping the light which is fantastic. I mean, I think that's all I was looking for, actually. Done. Moving on.